Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Film Review on the RGR Football Channel. This is Daniel Harms, and for those of you that are new, make sure you're hitting that like, the sub, and the bell notification apps. It's all helpful for you. It's helpful for us. just really helps everybody out that is watching this stuff. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Last Earlier in the week, we talked about how Vic Fangio was able to kind of mess with the Chiefs' offensive line protections, their empty protections on third down. And today we're going to go over the defense a little bit, what Steve Spagnuolo did in order to really screw with Drew Locke's perception of what he was seeing pre-snap versus what he saw after that. So let's just go ahead and get right in it. I think we have the first play here is really more of a basic look. If you, We're going to stop it here and go over what we're looking at. And we have Dan Sorensen down here shaded to the left as more of the one deep, true deep safety. The Chiefs are in their base package. You've got Damian Wilson here, Anthony Hitchens, and, excuse me, um, Willie Gay. You've got Matthew down in the box. So you have really what looks like a five and a three, which considering you've got two tight ends, two uh, receivers, and a running back kind of fits what you're expecting from a quarterback. A little bit of a giveaway here from – Charverius Ward, he's not 100% lined up one-on-one -on -one with the receiver. You can see that Abrilian's going to end up doing that to give that man coverage look. And that's what you want to give Drew Locke, who's not sure after, you know, the, after the snap what he's looking at. And uh, he's going to think that Jerry Judy down here has a really good matchup. So let's run through it, and then we'll talk about what happens afterward. And then you're going to see, like I said, there's there goes – Wilson backing up and then they cover they break out into cover two which ends up confusing Drew Locke just a little bit and he runs out to his right and and forces the ball into that small window to the right there it doesn't get very far if it was completed so we have again Wilson was just down at the line of scrimmage now he has joined his other linebackers and what we're going to see here is like I, said, I mentioned, they're going to break into a cover two. So you have, well, uh, excuse me, Sorensen's going to come down a little bit still and widen. And then you're going to have Matthew just bust out into that cover two shell. Uh, you have Breland down here and Ward are going to kind of match with their receivers. And then you have, you know, your zones from your linebackers. So what the thing that you're going to want to look at is Willie Gay and Rashad Breland because he's, Drew Locke is going to look directly at, Jerry Judy the whole time. It's his only, he, he's only reading what's happening with Jerry Judy. And after that is when he starts to get confused. All right, so let's run through it really quickly here, just so you can see what I'm talking about. And we're going to stop it. We're right here. You can see that Drew Locke is looking directly at Jerry Judy. And now with Rashad Breland breaking out, and instead of trying to cover him one-on-one, -on -one, he's widening to get that cover look. And you have Willie Gay kind of widening into this underneath the zone. So he has nowhere to go with the football. He knows now that this is not the coverage that he read pre-snap. And even though the Chiefs don't get a whole lot of pressure up front, he's going to end up breaking the pocket because when you can, you know, make the field a little bit smaller, you don't have to read the whole area of the field. You can make decisions on yourself a little bit easier. So he breaks to his right and he tries to, to figure out where to go with the football. And the Chiefs do a really good job of locking up ever, just about everybody and then he ends up throwing it over here to uh, Noah Fant out of bounds. So that the play doesn't go anywhere. So they did a good job of disguising that coverage before the snap and then executing all of the receivers where they needed to be and did a really good job there. And now we're going to see that, that third and four that we just popped up on the screen. And Steve Spagnuolo loves to blitz pre, uh, on third downs. Really, whenever he feels like blitzing, he's going to go ahead and do that. So right here with the tight end now motioned over to the left side, we've got what is essentially one-on-one -on -one coverage, what it looks like. Let's bring out the annotation here. Now Ward's covering this receiver. You have Fenton now, it looks like he's got the tight end. Thornhill, slot receiver, which is a tight end, I believe. And then one-on-one -on -one with Breland on the outside. And there is a little bit of a giveaway with here. You can see that Freeland's hips aren't turned to the receiver, neither are Ward's. So that does give the indication of zone. But again, he doesn't know what's going on, where it's coming from, or what they're going to end up looking like. So even if he knows that this could be a zone, he's not sure what it's going to look like after the snap. 
with all those guys blitzing up front, this is what we're going to see. We're going to go through the play, again, come back, and then look exactly what happened, where it happened, and why they were able to you know, be successful on this play. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's that tight end back over to the left side. Now we have, let's see here. Why does it not click when I want it to? All right. Matthew is down on the left side inside the box here. They moved Frank Clark inside, so he's now as a defensive tackle. They have Tershawn Wharton here, uh, K-Pass, and Chris Jones. You also have two linebackers in, in between Chris Jones and Tershawn Wharton in, you know, Dan Sorensen and Ben Neiman, who they could be coming at the same gap. They could be trying to gap here and gap here. He doesn't really know where they're coming from. And so on, on, after the snap, you have Ward as well as Breland acting as your two deeper cover guys. They're not going to get as close to the middle of the field to give a cover to field. They're still kind of condensed to the outside with Rashad Fenton coming down to more of a robber area of the field. So it's almost like a cover two slot drop in the sense that you have Rashad Fenton dropping into a coverage area, but they're not as widened or not as close together as they should be, or they're not as widened and he doesn't get as deep for cover three. So I'm not entirely sure what would the coverage would be called. And so then you're going to have Juan Thornhill is going to come underneath to the flat. Matthew's also going to be flat, but he's going to move with his receiver. Then you're going to have Ben Neiman shoot out to his left or to the back left. And Dan Sorens going to shoot out this way. So there's a lot going on in this play. And again, you've got, some issues with the after snap read for for Drew Locke and they just don't he just doesn't exactly get to the ball so this is what I mean by the confusion is he's going to end up going from his right to his left but with them dropping into coverage he throws the ball here to I believe a to a receiver who doesn't actually know the, the ball is coming I think he's expecting the ball to come here to his right but you know Breland breaks in the football but it's thrown out of bounds and so that was no fan. Okay, yeah. So, again, they, they did a really good job of scheming things up to confuse Drew Locke, and he ends up just throwing this away because he doesn't understand what the coverage looks like afterwards. So, now, it was a lot of fun to watch them just kind of screw with Drew Locke's head a little bit, and especially after that, you know, his little touchdown dance. It was, it was nice to uh, kind of see them go through with that, that, that thing here. And almost got a little ahead of the snap here. This is going to be one of the plays I want to really focus on. And Tershawn Wharton, you know, we've talked about him at length at times, really, is one of the, the most impressive uh, UDFAs that I've seen over the past couple of years. And this is 100% an effort play. So let's go ahead and watch it and just kind of wow at a UDFA that's able to do what he does here and, and record a, 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 essentially a, a strip fumble. He's able to just get his hand in there, figure that, find that football, and then it gets to, into the hands of Matthew. A really, really good effort play. And this is the kind of thing that you build a foundation of a career on for a guy like Tershawn Wharton, who, like we just mentioned, is a UDFA and just is able to get in and, and the snaps that he's earned and he's, he's got trust in the defense coordinator and the coaching staff. So you're going to see him right here, just take on these double teams and continues to try to work his way in and around and off. Then he sees Drew Locke coming around. So then again, the football comes out underneath it's third and 18. They're trying to get a first down. Melvin Gordon is doing everything he can to get to that first down. And all Tershawn Wharton does is he just runs him down finds the football and just sticks his hand in it right there. You can see it actually coming out right here. The football's out. That's just an incredible effort and like find like location. His eyes are able to see where the football is. Like that's just really, really sound fundamental football. And I just wanted to point out that he's doing all of this really by working himself into this defense and using his athletic ability. He's got strength. He's got speed. He's got all these different assets that m make him a complete kind of defensive tackle slash defensive end if they want to send him out there. So I was really impressed watching this defensive uh, performance against the Broncos. Granted, it is the Denver Broncos, but I think we need to kind of 
acknowledge that these younger players, this draft class that they've had has stepped up and they've played very, very well. They're about to get Mike Dana back. So I'm hoping that they can continue this, this streak that they're on. So again, I appreciate all of you guys watching this and I hope that, you know, this is some information that you can, you can keep with yourself. So again, have a great day guys. I hope, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching this video from the team at RGR Football. Click these videos to see more and subscribe to RGR Football.